good evening, or sorry, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Toby Lennox. I am the Vice President of Strategy Development and Stakeholder Relations for the Greater Toronto Airports Authority, and I'm pleased to call this meeting to order. Um, I would like to start by acknowledging that all requirements for public notice um, were met, and we have met all the conditions for holding this meeting. Um, today, you will hear from the chair of our board of directors, Vijay Jeet Sang uh, Kanwar. Then our president and CEO, Howard Eng, will have some comments. Um, finally, our chief financial officer, Brian Gable, will report on our financial performance. Bonjour et merci d'être ici aujourd'hui. Notre réunion aujourd'hui se déroulera en anglais. Mais si vous avez des questions ou des commentaires en français, nous serions heureux de vous entendre. L'occasion de poser des questions aura lieu à suite des présentations de Vijay Jeet Kanwar, Howard Eng et Brian Gable. Following our presentations, we will open the floor to questions and comments from the public. I would ask that any members of the media uh, please hold your questions until after the uh, public question and answer session, and then we'd be happy to answer your questions. By way of housekeeping and orientation, firstly, the exits are located along the front of the building. Uh, the washrooms are located to your left as you exit the area. Uh, parking validation will be available at the check-in table outside. Um, you will notice that since we are in an operating terminal, you will hear announcements from time to time. In addition, uh, copies of our 2012 annual report are available at the table outside. I would like to now introduce Vijay Jeet Kanwar, the chairman of our board. Thank you, Toby. It's my pleasure to be here with you today. I'm honored that I've been elected the chairman of board of GTAA, the operator of Toronto Pearson International Airport. Toronto Pearson is Canada's largest airport, and we handle one-third traffic every day. We handle more than 35 million passengers and 400,000 flights every year. We are the largest entry point into the United States. Perhaps the most importantly, Toronto Pearson is a source of employment for more than 40,000 people. We are the one of the largest employer in Ontario and generating about $6.8 billion in annual income. Families, employers, businesses, universities, cultural association, and countless other depend upon Toronto Pearson to provide them with safe, effective, and efficient travel all over Canada and around the world. We are keenly aware that airport operations have effect on community. Our prosperity and growth can also have an effect on our roads, transit system, and employees and passengers head to the airport for work or travel. In short, it is tremendous responsibility that we as a company and we as a board take on in making decisions about how best to run, develop, and operate this airport. It's a responsibility that we owe to so many, to the airlines flying people from Toronto to Edmonton, to the cab driver taking passenger home from a long trip, and to a municipality that wants to grow through expanded international trade. But it is exciting because this airport can, does, and will discharge this responsibility. We do so by operating the airport in a fiscally responsible manner with excellent customer service that generates an enduring sense of pride for our community. The success of this airport is not achieved by us alone, but by working in collaboration with many companies, agencies, individuals who work here. It is complicated and engaging task, but one that we are committed 
in achieving. The board of directors, which I have the honor of leading, is drawn from the community and nominated by the municipalities, professional associations, the province, and the federal government. We are, by design, the members of the community working towards the common goal of supporting a dynamic and growing Toronto Pearson for the benefit of Ontario. Howard Eng, our president and CEO, will touch on many achievements this year in a moment with you. We again have reduced our charges to the airlines while introducing many improvements in service to our passengers. This is the first time in GTAA history that we have reported a net profit. This profit is reinvested in the airport through capital investment and improvements to the customer service initiatives. But we believe this is the start and all our objectives must be founded on a sound financial responsibility and good business judgment. On behalf of the board, I would like to thank all Toronto Pearson employees for their contribution to another exceptional year. I would like to take a moment to recognize two members of the board who are retiring this year, Marilyn De Linton and Richard Soberman. Marilyn is a chartered accountant. She was appointed to the board of directors in 2004 and served on many, many, many board committees. Marilyn served as a chair of the board from 2009 to 2012. During that time, she guided the company with a careful and considered hand. And Marilyn worked diligently on company's strategic plan to focus on growing Toronto Pearson as an international hub. Thank you, Marilyn, on behalf of the company and on the behalf of the board for all your tremendous contribution to our success. Richard Soberman has been a member of the board since 2004. Richard is a leading transportation engineer in Canada, and throughout his time on the board, he has provided a wise, insightful perspective on operating this large facility in the midst of growing and dynamic city. We all appreciate Richard's expertise, unique perspective, and certainly his sense of humor. He may claim he is the simple engineer from Nova Scotia, but he has proven to be a valued member of the board, contributing to the success of our enterprise. Thank you, Richard, for all you've done for us. I'm also delighted to welcome Kathy Milsom and Roger Mahabir as the new directors of the GTAA. And now I am proud and pleased to call on Howard Eng, President and CEO of this airport, for his remarks. Thank you. Uh, the guy looks much younger than I do. He doesn't have as much gray hair. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to uh, Toronto Pearson's annual meeting. Oh, actually, I should say it's a GTAA's uh, annual meeting. Uh, I'd like to thank you for taking your time to come to this meeting. It's very important to us. Uh, I was about to add a few words in Cantonese, but that probably is the only words I know, so I better not go too far. <laughs> I like my colleague here who can do it in French and English. Pearson is the gateway to Canada and to all of North America. And as Vijay just mentioned, Toronto's Pearson is also a major source of economic growth for our region and our country. Our priority is to continuously develop Pearson Airport. We are here to support our region and our country as we create an airport that connects not only Toronto, GTA, but also Canada to the rest of the world. 
we are not just running an airport. As GTAA, we are running a business. The key to serving the community depends on our ability to run our business well and profitably. Running a business means we have to manage our costs and grow our revenues. It means that we must make investment in a financially prudent way while meeting the growing demands in our facilities. Financial strength will give us the flexibility. It will help us improve customer service, weather any economic ups and downs, and expand, expand our facilities without the need for more long-term debt. I'm pleased to report that last year, uh, GTAA realized a net profit of $14.3 million. I think it's the first time we realized a net profit. We saw an increase in the number of passengers using our terminals and in the number of movements on our runways. We had, we had the opportunity last year to welcome new airlines, such as Ethiopian Airlines and Philippine Airlines, as well as seeing new routes to new destinations like Antigua, Aruba, Costa Rica, and Port of Spain. All places I like to go right uh, in, the, in the middle of winter, uh, in February especially. Our two most important airline partners, Air Canada and WestJet, brought an additional 1.3 million passengers through our airport in 2012. All of this demonstrate the growth and vitality, not of the airport, but of the greater Toronto region. We are here to serve you. In November 2012, we announced an average decrease of 10% to landing and general terminal fees for 2013. This is the sixth consecutive years that fees have been reduced or held steady at this airport. We are committed to maintaining this fee structure for the same, at the same rate over the next three years. This will allow our airline business partner to plan better. We're also aware that we have to offer excellent customer service. We take our passengers' feedback very seriously and, and want to help enhance their experience through this airport. As a matter of fact, some of the feedback we received came through this meeting last year. We had a passenger ask, why, why, why don't we have more fast food with more pricing options at this airport? I'm happy to report that many projects were launched last year in the area of, of food services. Uh, with our partner, HMS Host, SSP, and then our newest partner, OTG, uh, we've opened new restaurants, offering different price points for our passengers, we have also have local celebrity chefs and fast food restaurants open at, at the airport. So we listened and we improved. Some progress has also been made with government, government agencies and carriers to streamline passenger processing through this airport. Examples of this are things, uh, are projects that included the introduction of automated border clearance kiosks in our terminals, which will speed up the custom or the immigration processes for Canadians returning from abroad. We have also just introduced a new connection process for connecting passengers uh, from Canada onwards to the United States through Terminal 1. Passengers are no longer required to pick up their bag before they pre-clear into the United States. Another step to reduce hassle in their journey. While we have made some improvement, we recognize that we have much more to do. To be successful in this endeavor, as Vijay mentioned earlier, we need to reach out to the 40,000 people that currently work at this airport. So last year, again at this meeting, a union representative shared that, he need, that we need to open dialogue to build stronger relationships with all the unions working at this airport. So based on that suggestion, we have developed a union working group. This group now meets monthly to address concern 
so that we can work together to improve the airport. So again, I'd like to say it as I said at the start, I'd like to thank you for caring and giving us your feedback. It is this commitment that will help us, it's your commitment that will help us continue to improve. Our vision for the airport, to encourage growth, to offer excellent customer service, to improve our financial health, and to be an active part of our community. All this will drive the decision that we make in the future. If we, are, if we are successful in attaining this vision, we'll become an airport that is the pride of our community. In closing, I am excited by the potential of Toronto Pearson Airport. By focusing on improving our financial strength, customer service, and enhancing our relationship with our neighbors and communities, I'm, I'm convinced that we'll be able to maximize the the incredible opportunity that's offered us in the future. Uh, in finishing my first, first year as the CEO, I have seen again and again how people across the airport are indeed ready to help. Moving forward, this spirit will help us realize our full potential to be one of the world's best airport. Thank you very much. Now I'll ask uh, Brian Gable, our CFO, who knows all the numbers, to come up and explain our financial statement for us. Thanks very much, Howard. 2012 was a good year. Uh, we plan to do even better in the future. As Howard mentioned, we aspire to be one of the world's best airports, which involves doing a million little things well. We need to put in place the mechanisms and behaviors that will encourage growth in traffic and in revenue. We need to run the airport like a business, being conscious of the cost and of the service that we provide. And we need to offer excellent customer service. And we need to do all of that in a financially and socially sustainable manner. So how did we perform in 2012 relative to those aspirations? Well, as you can see from the uh, green bar, Passenger traffic grew 4.4% to a record 34.9 million passengers during 2012. Growth was achieved in all three passenger sectors with domestic traffic seen in the gold bar, growing 4.3%, travel to the United States seen in the navy blue bar, growing 5.4%, and international traffic shown in the light blue bar, growing 3.7%. We also saw favorable performance in our management of costs and in the generation of revenue from non-aeronautical operations. We did manage our costs. In 2012, operating expenses were 2% higher than 2011, but were $56 million, or 14% less than they were in 2008. We were able to take advantage of a low interest rate environment to refinance de debt at more attractive rates. During 2012, two debt issues totaling almost a billion dollars matured and we issued $400 million of new borrowings at a rate of just in excess of 3%. As indicated by the light blue bars, we continued to invest in the airport, spending a little less than $100 million on the enhancement and refurbishment of assets during 2012. Notwithstanding those investments, we've seen some stabilization and modest decline in debt levels as we endeavor to do more with the assets we have in place. The debt we have outstanding uh, net of cash and reserve balances is shown by the red line, which at the end of 2012 was roughly $6 billion, down from $6.4 billion in 2008. Healthy revenue gains were realized in ground parking and transportation, shown in the red pie slice, as well as the, <clears throat> the revenue we realized from the retail space we provide as shown in the light blue pie slice. There was less improvement seen in the rental revenue. Other revenue, which is predominantly revenue from the sale of electricity uh, produced from our power generation facility, dropped as we had lower commodity prices and some less demand uh, from the market. Although it's desirable to be more efficient, that by itself is not enough. 
We also need to improve the value and the choice that we offer to our customers. And again, we made some progress in those areas. We have reduced or held constant, as Howard said, uh, the rates we charge air carriers for the last six years. In fact, on average, the rates we charge air carriers in 2013 are more than 20% less than they were in 2008, reflecting the improvements we've seen in revenues and costs and the growth we've seen in traffic. The lower rates we've put in place for 2013 are expected to continue through 2015, providing further benefits to the airline customers and providing more encouragement for them to build traffic here in Toronto. We also, as Howard suggested, made efforts to refresh our retail offerings for the traveling public. We added a number of international and local brands to our retail offerings in both consumer goods and in food and beverage. And this provides the traveling public with more selection and provides the airport with an opportunity to generate additional non-aeronautical revenue. We are a non-share capital corporation that takes our community responsibility seriously. To ensure long-term financial sustainability, we must generate profits and a positive cash flow. To provide the service our public deserves, we reinvest these profits into the airport. And starting in 2012, that's just what we've done. In 2012, as Howard mentioned, we reported net income of $14.3 million as compared to a loss of $17 million reported in 2011. We continue to, gr to grow traffic and revenues while containing costs, and we expect to show favorable results again in the future. This slide compares passenger traffic over the last five years in the blue bars to the net debt that we have outstanding as depicted in the red line. With the major airport development efforts now complete, Toronto Pearson can now serve incremental traffic at relatively modest incremental cost. And as a consequence, the revenue and earnings we generate from the growth in traffic, as well as from our non-aeronautical activities, provides us with some cash that we can use to enhance services, to reduce rates to our air carrying carrier partners, to pay for capital investments, or to pay for debt. In addition to the substantial rate reductions we provided to air carriers over the last six years, We've also had to make uh, the opportunity to make some modest reductions in the amount of outstanding debt we've had, an area we expect to emphasize further in the future. So to recap, notwithstanding the rate reductions we provided to air carriers, revenues were maintained at 2011 levels, operating expenses increased only modestly, and interest rates declined in part due to debt redemption costs we incurred in 2011, but also due to a reduction in debt levels and in the interest rates that we pay. In 2012, we reported the net income of $14.3 million, an improvement from the loss of $17.1 million that was reported in 2011. Now, we look to the future with both optimism and caution. Certainly, the media and governments have expressed their concerns regarding the global economy. Yet, the airport has the capacity to grow, and with the three-year pricing arrangement that we announced starting in 2013, we feel that we provided air carriers with an incentive to bring their growth here. We feel we have a solid strategy that's focused on customers, profit, and on providing a sustainable airport operation for Toronto and its surrounding communities. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the portion of the meeting where we open the floor for questions and comments. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that um, the GTA is always open to accepting questions and comments really at any time. This is just simply one opportunity. So please feel free that if you feel that you've got a question that you don't want to raise here, you can approach one of our staff and we can always see if we can go off, um, offline or perhaps answer your question another way. Um, we do have individuals with microphones that they'll be able to circulate around and I would ask if you could please identify yourself by name. I may, just for people's in, uh, information, repeat the question for clarity. Um, and I will moderate the session and I will direct the questions to a member of the staff or um, a member of the board. Um, in the interest of time and fairness, I would ask that if you've got an extensive uh, follow-up questions, that we could take that offline. We could do it on a sidebar if we could. As we say, this is your opportunity to ask some questions and comments. So if I could, I'd open the floor uh, for questions or comments to the public. Yes, sir, at the back. 
on? Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Oh, sorry. My name is Eddie Rice. I'm the chairman of Ontarians with Disabilities and the subcommittee for League for Human Rights of Bene Perth, Canada. I do a lot of traveling and I do most of it through Pearson. I put together a proposal regarding accessibility for people with disabilities using Pearson. Uh, even though you have met building code standards, it still uh, falls short of the real world needs of people with disabilities. Just to give you a, a brief example, you have right outside, you were mentioning the washrooms. There is a family washroom outside, which is the washroom that I would need because I have a scooter, mm -hmm. which needs a larger area to use. However, I can't open the door to get into the bathroom. The door is very heavy, and it has, uh, I guess, strong springs on it, however. A simple solution would be to put in a power automatic door. This is just one example of some of the suggestions that I would like to propose. I know a lot of people want to make comments, so I've taken the liberty of putting together a proposal that I would like to hand to you and the board, please. Absolutely. Now, and thank you very much for your comments and your proposals. Very helpful. Thank you very much for that. Very helpful. Are there other questions? Yes, down front. My name is Nazma Street Pintel, and I work at this airport with the Airline Limousine Services. Um, Mr. Howard Ng, um, thanks for realizing that the people that work at this airport want to help. In fact, we're very eager to help, and we are always helpful to anyone at this airport regarding anything. Um, Brian Gable, this is a question that I would like to direct towards you. Um, you say that the airport has increased in passenger service. This airport has made a profit in 2012. Yet the limousine industry is the only industry in North America at an airport that provides a service that distinguishes itself from the taxi. And we're only a difference of $4, or we're supposed to be $4 difference or less. Um, but we have dropped significantly. Our numbers are down from 2011 and 2012. Even though the airport has not really given it to us, I know that the numbers are down. I was wondering if you could actually give us a copy of that, where the numbers are down, and how, sort of help us in understanding that not only are fares down, but there must be a really good reason for it, because prearranged is increased, taxis have increased, buses have increased, park and fly has increased, and even now your valet parking has increased. Um, and third, Mr. Lennox, I believe one of the reasons why the limousine industry is suffering right now, which is, again, I'd like to remind you, is the only limousine mm -hmm. service in North America. We were here before the taxis. We improved the taxis. In fact, everybody mm -hmm. wanted us because we give a professional luxury customer mm -hmm. service. In fact, excellent customer service, which is why we're still in business. Um, I was hoping that you would understand that having the smoking on our stand is also a hindrance to our business. Uh, if I could, on the, um, on the smoking uh, issue, why don't we go out afterwards? You can show me what that issue is so that we can then see what the issues are. We'll just go out and have a look at it. Uh, Brian, with respect to the traffic statistics. I, can, I can't say that I have with me traffic statistics for limos, but why don't we chat afterwards? We'll see if we can get you what you need. Okay. Are there other questions? Yes, sir, right, right here. Thank you. Uh, recently, we have uh, seen the airlines have uh, had a special meeting concerning uh, why the ticket prices of Canadian airline travel is unreasonably higher than, say, our neighbors to the south, and we see migration of passengers on a big scale into the uh, adjoining U.S. states. And uh, looking at the notes about your ground lease, for example, is $130.5 million for uh, Pearson. And uh, you multiply that income for the federal government times 27 uh, CAAs operated across country. I know some of them aren't that high. But is there any move by the GTAA to uh, pressure to have these, uh, you know, rates such as those reduced so that you will give us passengers that the airlines to give us passengers a break on the uh, seat uh, prices. Howard? Uh, 
I would, as an authority, we lease the, the airport from the federal government. And as part of our ground lease is, is a lease payment. And what you see in there is the lease payment we make to the federal government. I think Brian also mentioned earlier that uh, we have and have been doing for the last six years uh, not only hold our, our charges to airline steady, but have decreased it. And we have now, just this year, we have decreased it by another 10 percent uh, for the next three years. I think we are working with the airlines to, be, to create in Pearson a competitive environment so that they can plan for the future, plan their growth, and plan their route structure. Uh, I think uh, the complexity uh, of, of airline pricing uh, has to deal with more than just the ground rent in, 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 in Toronto, Pearson. Uh, they're dealing with high fuel prices. They're, they're looking at staff costs and so on. We are doing our best. We will continue to do our best to, uh, to work with the airline and reduce their costs. Thank you. Just a reminder, if you could just introduce yourself when you, uh, just for the record, in case we need to follow up at all. Are there other questions? Right at the back. Yes, sir. You asked for my name. I, I know your name. <laughs> Hi there. Sean Smith, CAW 2002. I'd like to pick up on Howard's point because I was that union person uh, last year at the AGM. And the difference between last year and this year is night and day. And I really want to thank everyone from the GTA for that. Not only were our concerns met, but we've been working together. Um, and this is unprecedented because the year before, there was no dialogue between the GTA and the 40,000 workers. We represent about 20,000, the three unions that are here today. And, and the only dialogue we had, quite frankly, was through poor communications from our management. Um, and this dialogue, this, these monthly meetings have really been tangible results and have been actually very productive in moving forward. I remember last year a big issue was smoking. And, and to the point uh, from, from a colleague with the limo drivers, we work together on it because quite frankly, us stressed out airline employees are probably the biggest offenders of this. <laughs> so by working together, uh, we were able to resolve and that's the designated smoking areas today. And I just want to thank you and encourage this process to continue because this is exactly what we need to do to build a better community for all of us here. So thanks again. Thank you very much. Are there other questions? Yes, sir, at the back. Hi. My name is John Ufa. Um, I'm retired. No company representation or anything. But... Uh, we have traveled extensively, my wife and I, and there are a few irritants when we arrive back at Toronto Airport. Uh, number one, could somebody please explain to me why when we arrive in Toronto in the middle of winter, snow blowing, temperature in this minus degrees, and we usually come from a warm climate, finally get our luggage, go through customs, and need a limo or taxi to get home. Why do we have to line up outside freezing our butts off until we finally get a limo? It takes typically 20 minutes to 30 minutes to get one. And by the time we get home, if we don't have a cold, uh, there's something wrong someplace. So that's number one question. Okay. Uh, number two, I don't know whether you want me to... Just yeah, give yeah. them to you all And at then once. I'll just summarize them and yeah. we'll see if we can answer them. Uh, luggage cards, fees for luggage cards. When we come out and pick up uh, visitors from overseas, uh, they have to pay the two doors. Uh, just coming back from Shanghai, Bangkok, Hong Kong, uh, Beijing, you name it, uh, all the places, luggage cards did not cost two dollars nor were we returned 25 cents when you actually returned the luggage card, if you did. Now, um, if labor cost is a concern, and I'm sure it is, Copenhagen Airport has got a minimum wage of 21 bucks an hour, and they somehow other managed to have free luggage cards, so don't understand. Uh, the other thing, it's a tiny little beef. When I check out, when I go and pick up somebody, um, and I clock out my uh, parking ticket, uh, it registers 20 minutes more than I have actually parked, or rather, than at the time that I check out. 
um, which means that you usually go into the next category uh, of fee. I realize it's only a small amount. Mm -hmm. It irritated me nonetheless. Sure. Uh, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to, and I'm very pleased to be able to speak here. Uh, so I will sit down and sure. listen to comments. And thank, thank you. So just the taxi limousine lineups outside, the question about luggage fee carts and the issue of the parking ticket. Um, Howard, do you? I guess that's the job description in the CEO's. Uh, I'm here to answer all complaints. Uh, I'll take it in no particular order. Uh, it, it, it is an interesting issue. I uh, uh, coming coming from Hong Kong last year, uh, the complaint there is the reverse. Why do I have to stand outside at plus 30 degrees, 32 <laughs> degrees, 100 percent humidity, waiting for a taxi and limousine? So I hear you. I understand. We'll review this and see if there's a way we can manage it inside. Uh, Free luggage cart, uh, we are looking into it. I also came from airports uh, where, where it is for free. Uh, we're relatively unique in Canada. Uh, our, our contract in that area is coming up, and we will review it, and hopefully uh, in the near future you'll get what your heart desire. Uh, pick up tickets, particularly in the, in the parking, I'll take that away. Let me have time to look at it, and we'll, we'll re respond on that one. Is that Okay. Are there any other questions? Yes, sir, at the back. Good afternoon. Oh, Good sorry, can you make sure that's on? Good afternoon. Thanks. My name is Arthur Sinkowski. I reside in Mineola East. And for those of you in the room, that's south of the QEW, poor credit area. Uh, years ago, I made a complaint about uh, the path or the the um, flight path from east to west, which was flying over the QEW at that point in time. And I was told that there was runway construction, so this will go back to normal operation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, it did not. The normal operation now is that the flight literally banks over my house when it comes up over the lake and continues west. So my question is, how come the GTAA doesn't give people notice of flight plan change. And you can do that by registered mail and have everybody in the community talk about community involvement and you want, you want to be open and transparent. Honestly, I do not see it. I do not believe it. If anything, GTAA makes me quite angry and quite upset. Also, City of Mississauga has a noise by law at 11 o'clock at night and the flights are still pumping out over top of the house. I, I have to be honest with you. I find GTTA rude and ignorant. Those flight paths, A, go back to your normal flight path where you belong, or B, keep the flight paths out over the lake. We have modern technology where you be able to monitor and keep track of your flights. You do not need to bring anything that close over residential area. So what can we do to change that? And thank you. Uh, thank you for your, your, your information for me. I, 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 don't, I don't know in terms of your reference before that construction that was uh, how many years ago you were saying? I don't, several years ago. Se was it several years ago? Yes. Okay. Uh, we, we do have noise monitoring, so we will follow up and track and see if we can find out what happened. Uh, direction of flight is dictated by, 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 not by GTA. The flight path is determined between uh, in NAVCAN, uh, also depending on wind. But we'll look into the particular issue you're, you're relating, and then we'll get back to you and see if you say that something was changed as a result of construction and it never went back, we'll look into that and come back to you on this. Now, I, we know uh, NAV Canada is and we are reviewing their flight path and, and what we, in our discussion with them, they will be doing some town halls, if I remember, or some meetings. Yeah. Uh, while I'm looking at Toby, he's my noise <laughs> person, so maybe I'll let him give you some more detail of some of the things that NAV Canada will do in order to communicate the changes in flight path in the future. 
Um, it is true that um, Nav Canada, which is the company that's responsible for the civil air navigation system, um, did, is undertaking a, a review of the airspace between Windsor, Toronto, and Montreal. Um, they had engaged in a public outreach program um, and uh, are, as a result of some of the changes. Um, but perhaps what we can do is meet with you and we can talk about your individual circumstances, see what the issues are. We do have members of our noise team here as well so that we can start talking about where your location is um, and um, what, what the impact has been. Um, we are in discussions with NAV Canada um, through regular channels. So if we could explore this with you afterwards, we can certainly have a look at what's, see what's going on. I would be more than happy to stick around. Yeah, Thank that'd you. be great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Are there other questions or comments? Yes, Richard. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Richard Bernke, Richard Banke in English. And it warms the cockles of my heart to see such talent here. And you do keep a wonderful airport, I must say. And any business students who are in the, uh, in the room, if you look at your time from the time we started, this is what you call a business meeting. It is crisp, neat, time for beefs in the end of it, and it's something that I want to acknowledge because last year it was 41 minutes, and you're running a little late today, but <laughs> you had a bad start. So I just wanted to make a note of that, right? That's very crisp, very neat, and, uh, and thank you. Thank you. And any other questions or comments? Um, seeing none and hearing no more questions in this forum, at least, I want to thank everyone for being with us today. Um, and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much for attending.